Good morning, Francois. Today I'm going to talk about coffee. I love coffee. But where did it come from? There's lots of legends about how coffee was discovered, but nobody knows for sure. What people do seem to agree on is this. The coffee plant originated somewhere in Ethiopia. From there it was transported to the great port city of Mocha in Yemen. And in Yemen people started cultivating it around the 1400s, and probably even earlier. The beverage first became popular in the Muslim areas of Africa and the Middle East. This was because the religion forbade alcohol, but allowed coffee. At least for a while. Then they banned it, then they allowed it, then they banned it, then they allowed it, repeat about 50 million times. So coffee houses open where people would meet, drink coffee, play chess, just hang out and do business and chill. And as usual, when you're just hanging out, the topic often turns to politics. And soon these coffee houses became the centers of political activity, and they were promptly banned. And over the following decades, they were reopened, banned, reopened, banned, and reopened, and banned over and over again until the authorities finally just smacked taxes on the whole thing and left them open. By the 1600s, coffee had spread to Europe and was quickly becoming quite popular. But not everyone liked it. The opponents called it the bitter invention of Satan. Coffee was still largely seen as a Muslim drink, and the clergy didn't like that. In Venice, which had a lot of trade with the Middle East and Africa, the clergy made such a fuss about coffee that the Pope himself, Clement VIII, had to step in and intervene. But before the Pope made any kind of decision, he wanted to try the drink himself. And he did. And he liked it so much, he said, it's okay. This is now a Christian drink too. By the end of the 1600s, coffee had spread to both North America and to parts of Asia, but it was still being grown only on the Arabian Peninsula. The Arabs had tried very hard to maintain a monopoly on growing coffee, but some sneaky Dutchmen managed to get a hold of some seedlings, and they transported it home to the Netherlands, where they grew it in greenhouses. They also took some seedlings over to Indonesia and to India, they failed horribly in growing the coffee in India, but they did manage very well on the island of Java. In North America, people still very much preferred drinking alcohol or tea, but that all changed after King George imposed some heavy taxes on tea and people revolted against that in the famous Boston Tea Party. No, the other tea party. In 1714, the mayor of Amsterdam gave the French King Louis XIV a coffee plant as a gift. The king had it planted in the botanical gardens in Paris. A few years after that, a young naval officer took some seedlings from this plant and sailed over to Martinique with it. Martinique was at the time a French colony. There the coffee seedlings were planted and they grew really well. Coffee soon spread to the other Caribbean islands and by 1788 half the world's coffee came from Haiti. Unfortunately, the people working the plantations were slaves and conditions sucked. The Haitian revolution happened and the coffee business never really recovered there after that. Meanwhile, coffee had spread to Brazil, and during the following century it spread to the rest of Central and South America. Lots of rainforest was chopped down, and lots of indigenous people were booted from their land to make space for coffee. There were many riots and lots of bloodshed. Today things are a little bit better, but coffee is still a debated crop because of unfair trading practices and because of the ecological impact of the plantations. Coffee is a huge industry. It's the second most traded commodity on Earth, second only to oil. Coffee grows as red or purple berries called coffee cherries on coffea plants of various sizes. There are thousands of varieties of the coffea plant, the large majority of them being subspecies of the coffea arabica, which accounts for about 80% of the world production of coffee. 20% comes from the coffea canifora plant, which has two main subspecies, robusta and naganda. Though people often use robusta as a synonym for any kind of canifora coffee. Arabica coffee is said to be the better one because it's more smooth and rich in flavor, while robusta is more bitter. That's because Robusta contains 40% more caffeine than Arabica. Caffeine is an alkaloid just like codeine, cocaine, and nicotine, and has a bitter taste. So how do you make coffee? So you pick the cherries, then you dry them and clean them, and you peel off the fleshy part of the berry, and you get two green beans in the middle. They aren't actually beans, they just look like beans. Then you dry those, and then you ship them off somewhere. After that, you roast them to various degrees, grind them into little pieces, add boiling water, and hey presto, delicious coffee. The roasting of the coffee is a very important part of the process. When you roast the green beans, they pop, kind of like popcorn, and the entire cellular structure of the bean changes. When you heat up the beans, this kind of oil, cafe oil or coffee oil, comes out. If you heat them up too much, then this coffee oil burns, and that's icky. If you heat them too little, then the coffee oil doesn't come out. So how you like them background? I'm not very good at editing video yet, so I'm playing around today with some green screen techniques and special effects and filters and stuff, and see if I can get better at it. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I agree. So is coffee good for you? According to research done at Harvard, there is no evidence saying that coffee is bad for you if you drink up to six cups a day, meaning that your risk of dying is no greater than if you didn't drink coffee at all. 
But keep in mind that caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant, so if you feel shaky or nervous or anxious or you can't sleep, you might want to consider cutting down a little. Caffeine isn't the only thing in coffee though, there are lots of other chemical compounds too. There's some evidence that says that coffee might protect you from Parkinson's disease, from type 2 diabetes, from liver cancer, and from liver cirrhosis. You might also have a somewhat lower risk of death from cardiovascular disease, but there's not enough evidence to say drink coffee, it's good for you. According to the Mayo Clinic, high consumption of unfiltered coffee is associated with mild elevations of cholesterol levels. Their research also indicates that drinking two or more cups per day might increase the risk of heart disease in people that have a fairly specific, but quite common, genetic mutation that slows down the breakdown of caffeine in the body. There are loads of ways to make coffee. You can boil it in a pot, you can use a French press or a percolator, you can drip water through a filter with coffee in it, but my personal favorite is shooting hot water through tightly packed coffee under high pressure inside an espresso machine. So I hope you enjoyed this little video of coffee, and I'll see you next time. Bye.